Hey guys, uh, welcome to an all new series of content, Glenn Murray Centurion Select. Over the next few weeks, we'll be chatting to some of the biggest names to play for the club uh, and who are of course part of our Centurions club, so played over 100 games or more. First guest we've got on this week is Marcus Dorolo, 148 games uh, in Edinburgh Colours. Um, he's definitely a bona fide Edinburgh legend. Marcus, how are you getting on? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good. Um, delighted to be here. How, how? First of all, we'll just get started. How's lockdown life for you? You mentioned there you've not cut your own hair yet. It's it's looking okay? <laughs> yeah, resisted in that. Um, yeah, no, it's, it comes with its challenges, but we've, we've done a bit of homeschooling and my wife works from home, Leanne, so she's, we're trying to kind of do a bit of that each and, and, and share it but it's uh yeah it's 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 kind of wearing a wee bit thin now uh into the well 12th week or whatever it'll be uh, um so so yeah hopefully we've there's light at the end of the tunnel and we can we can kind of move out of it pretty soon how much uh how much are you missing live sport yeah quite a bit really i think i see um i see the New Zealand rugby will be back on pretty soon. Um, and it's just, I, I don't know, you don't really know, notice that you miss it so much when until it's, it's like everything until you don't have it anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, even if you're just sitting down in front of the TV overnight, you know, you'll surf the sport channels to see what's on. But um, there's a lot of old stuff there, which is quite interesting. But, yeah, it's the live sport aspect is something that um, that, that you really miss out on, yeah. You might have seen, uh, or maybe someone tagged you on Facebook. We've been showing a lot of kind of classic games on Saturdays. Um, we had the Toulouse 03 game on just just right at the start. Did you manage to catch any of that? I did actually. It was my my uh, mum and dad actually watched it, and and um, I I kind of I kind of watched a bit of it, and it was it was good actually. It's quite interesting though to see how how different rugby is yeah. <laughs> now to what it was, but. No, that was a that was a great day uh, for us, um, and that was a really good, uh, really good season we had in Europe there, uh, especially in the group stages. I think we only lost to lose away from home, but unfortunately that meant that they were seeded, I think, number one, and we went to eight, so we played them again. So, yeah. Um, but but yeah, it was a good it was it was good to see these things. I've seen as well a couple of others, uh, Scotland games and what have you over the years. So. Uh, 1990 Grand Slam and, and all that sort of thing. So it's been it's been good, good, good thing to keep you keep you interested. Well, a guy I guess you played alongside was Brendan Laney. We had him on our podcast, and I'm pretty sure he referenced you as having the best spin pass he's ever seen. So I mean, you got to take that compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, I had. I have, I'll need to. I'll, I'll need to listen to it then. <laughs> um, but but yeah, no, Brendan. Um, he. He really revolutionised him and Todd coming over to Edinburgh. I think we were uh, a team that was in transition. There was a new coach, uh, and Frank came on board. And there was a lot of guys Frank had coached um, through through age group stuff. So we had a good, talented bunch of guys, but we were all very young. And when Brendan um, and Todd especially came over, I think it just it gave a lot of guys the confidence to have them, you know, playing against them, but they really brought a focus to the squad and to, to the way in which we trained and how we, you know, how, how they operated as well. So they were, they were good. Um, they were really good influences on Edinburgh at that time. So. Well, Marcus, we'll get started on this as we've kind of chatted about, this is Centurion Select. So you're going to select some of the guys that you played alongside with during your time in the capital um, questions could range from, you know, hardest player, best trainer, whatnot. So we'll get started. Um, first question for me, most skillful player you played with during your time in Enra? Um Probably going back to Brendan, I think he, he, was pretty, he was pretty good in general at everything. You know, he, he, in New Zealand, I think he played fullback and wing. So he was, he, he was pretty quick. Um, and then when he played at Edinburgh, it was more in the centre. Uh, played a bit of ten as well, but he could he could change a game. So he had a good good sidestep. He was strong. He could pass pass off both hands. He could he could kick. 
he goal kicked, you know. So in, in broad terms, uh, he was probably one of the most skillful uh, guys at Edinburgh, certainly, that I played with. And then and probably, uh, I mean, if there was someone else kicking-wise, I think Dan Parks was, I mean, he his kicking from hand was just unreal. You know, he could hit a, you know, he could hit a floodlight from 50, 50 yards away repeatedly. Like, his accuracy was was unreal. But I think in general terms, probably Brendan overall, for all aspects, you know, he was, he, he was pretty good and, and pretty hard as well. well. What about someone like Mike Blair? Would he, would he fall into that category? Probably different skills. Yeah, yeah. Mike had... Mike um, was... A lot, of, a lot of the time when you, you watch the game in general... You know, you might not see what what he was doing, um, and he was he was excellent around the breakdown. His his skills of manipulating the the first, you know, the the guard player or or, or the first defender in the line um, was great. But he was, yeah, he was he he had a lot of good um, good manipulation around there. He was a, he had a good strong running game and you know a, a good pass. But he's also he was also a good thinker as well, so it's probably taken him on to, to what he's doing now, coaching wise. But yeah, he 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 was great, and uh, he used to put the blind side going after a few a few gaps and stuff. And Simon Webster will be able to tell you about that more, <laughs> than, more than I would. Second question: You can't name yourself as this, but hardest player um, you've ever played with? Although Simon Taylor was, you know, seen as as a as a skillful player and a, a running back role, he was he was also pretty hard. I mean, he never took a backward step. I think going back to that Toulouse game, when you actually saw how good he was, how yeah. how many tackles he made, uh, how many ball carries he made, he was he was up there with 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 probably the hardest player uh, I've played with, and, and and of course Todd Todd Blackadder. Um, I think he. He was really tough, and his last ever game, I think it must have been his last game because he couldn't have carried on beyond it. it was in, I think, over in Ireland, and he he had a shoulder injury, and literally at half time he came into the to the the dressing room, and I remember it because Stuart Barton kind of went up, he was a physio, and started mucking around with his shoulder, and he said, "Look, you're going to have to come off." And he said, "No, no. Can you not just can you not just put tape on it?" <laughs> and he said, "No, no. I want to finish a game." And he's like, "No, no, no. You're going to have to come off, Todd. There's literally nothing holding your shoulder <laughs> in place." Yeah. So I think he'd he'd uh, he he then went on and had shoulder surgery for a for for a, um, a prosthetic shoulder or, or whatever it was. But literally, he was. He, you wouldn't even let that sort of take him off the pitch <laughs> if possible. So, so, so yeah, when people are putting, you know, their body on the line like that, it's, you know, he's, he, I think for that reason, he, he would probably shade it, I think. <laughs> we, we spoke to, uh, to Crossy, Simon Cross recently. Yeah. And, well, he claims this is probably true. He had the, the highest tackle count uh, for an Edinburgh player in one game for, for a long, long time. I think it was like 38 tackles or something like that in a game. Would he fit the bill in terms of hardest players or something that just doesn't really take a step backward? Yeah, Crossy, Crossy was a, an underrated guy, I always thought. He uh, he, he played well. Um, the back row was really competitive at that time. Crossy was in the team and then I think he he played quite a few games at uh, in the back row and then um, you had Simon Taylor, you had Todd that arrived, and Ali Hogg came on the scene. So Crossy kind of was in the team for a while, and then unfortunately for him, just you know, I think he there's a story that Matt Williams, uh, he probably t- did he tell you this one where he I was don't think basically so, no. it was down in Wales, I think, and I'm sure he was on the bench for Scotland. And Matt Williams told him to go and get stripped, and anyway. He went and stripped, standing on the touchline, and never got on. So that's how close he came uh, <laughs> to like a full cap. But he, yeah, he played. He played some some good games and was was certainly underrated. I thought as a as a player. 
Well, next up, you maybe touched on a couple of guys there, but best overseas player that you played with? I'm sure Todd or, or Brendan will probably come into that category. Yeah, I think at that time, we also had another guy called um, uh, Dave Hewitt as well. So he he was another all black. So, yeah. I mean, these guys, their influence at the time was, was really good. I would, I would say... Todd Todd was probably the most influential. Uh, I remember that's how excited everyone was. He was coming. He was the All Black captain. I think we just watched them win the Super Super Twelve or something back then. So he was probably the biggest influence and then the best player. He was one of the guys that that would, you know, he would he wouldn't he was very quiet when he initially came, and I think he just wanted to to get on with his own business and things like that. But he certainly um, led from the front. And, you know, I think he brought great confidence to all the young guys that were there. So he was probably the the, the most influential. And, yeah. Uh, and, then, and then very close with Brendan. I mean, Brendan, um, Brendan ran the team because he, he was playing at 10 at that time. So, so it was very close between them both. But probably Todd being the captain and things like that just just edged them out. Just moving on, Marcus, most underrated player that you played with uh, during your time at the club? Um, I think I think Derek Lee was pretty much the most underrated guy. He he, I think he got about, I don't know, 13, 12, 13 caps or something like that. But when he played for Edinburgh, he really made a, a difference. It didn't matter who we were playing. He had the ability to, to bust the line yeah. Um, and yeah, he was he was he was a really good player. Um, and I I always thought that he had the ability. I thought to get much many more caps than he actually did. Um, but but yeah, he was probably the most underrated. I think. Yeah, we spoke to to Simon Webster uh, and and Simon Cross as we mentioned there. And I think they said that Derek Lee had the best handoff. Probably yeah, he did. Yeah. Ever seen? Yeah. Yeah. He he. he he he's obviously not particularly big, but he used to have a sort of straight arm handoff, and it and it was almost like a jab because people would actually like go down after they'd been handed off by him. I mean, a lot bigger guys, so he was yeah he 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 was a talented talented guy and a natural at it as well. Both Simons also made the claim that he got double knee surgery to to miss out on preseason one year. I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> yeah, he was not the best trainer. I don't think, but he. Uh, <laughs> He always had something that he was he, he, he was doing just to get away with uh, missing missing a few <laughs> missing a bit of training, especially in the preseason. Just moving on. Uh, next up, funniest guy that you played with during your time. Um, there's a few a, a, a few mentions. I would say um, Scott Murray was always sort of good fun. He he was great fun on off the pitch. In the training, you know, in in the training rooms or weights rooms and things like that, he was good. But kind of as a double act, I, th- I had a lot of fun um, when we went on a tour to with Scotland to Australia with uh, Chunk and Stevie Scott. So they were they were pretty funny together, actually. Those two, um, and I spent quite a lot of time and with them just throughout the career. So yeah, they were they were they were good fun together. Did you ever have to uh, to room with Chunk? Yeah, I used to get I used to get uh, roomed with Chunk quite a lot because I think he he snored quite a bit, and uh, <laughs> and I I was like I, it didn't really bother me too much um, because I, I, I kind of I kind of knew him so well. So yeah, I've, I've roomed uh, on that tour actually. I roomed with him for for loads, so I had had quite a few laughs with him on that tour. Yeah, Brendan Laney was telling us that um, Chunk was his first roommate when he came over yeah. and he couldn't understand a word he was saying for the first mm-hmm. two days. So I'm sure you probably didn't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of knew him pretty well. So uh, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of laughs and midnight midnight snacks he used to like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Chunk will fall into this category for the next uh, question. Best and worst trainers in your career? Chunk actually, he trained really hard. Uh, Chunk, he just, he just kind of probably wasn't gifted, <laughs> gifted <laughs> with the physique for it. But he did. He trained, he trained really hard. Um, 
best trainers. I mean, Chris Patterson was a pretty good trainer. He was always sort of um, really fit in the fitness tests. He's naturally fit guy. Um, he was quick, and you know, if there was a fitness, and we used to do, you know, beep tests or whatever, he was always kind of last out the beep test. So he was probably the best trainer in that respect. And then young guys that came on who I thought really pushed it in the gym were like Ali Dickinson. He was, these guys came in and they were obviously sort of a, a lot younger than we were and Ali Strokosh as well, but they were always breaking some sort of record in the in the gym and it kind of just pushed, pushed everyone along, I think. So they were probably the best. Worst trainer, uh, God, I wouldn't <laughs> class myself as the worst. I wasn't a great <laughs> trainer, but um, I don't know. Um, yeah, De- Desi Lee wasn't the best trainer, as we've <laughs> said. He kind of liked to skip out of stuff um, if he could. Um, and yeah, Scott Scott Murray never liked a gym session. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Because I think his uh, levers were, were too long, but <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, probably probably those guys. Well, listen, I won't have you uh, chuck anyone else under the bus, so we'll yeah. move on. Um, just looking at people you've played against, who'd be the, the toughest opponent you ever faced? So, I mean, that can be on the international stage as well. Yeah, I mean, the toughest. I think the the one who I remember the most in the game was uh, I was lucky enough in 2001 to play for Scotland against the Barbarians against uh, Lomu so he came and he scored four tries in that game he was just he just looked like a, a sort of man mountain in that game no one could no one could get close to him so he was probably the most or the toughest and most effective in any one game that I ever played against you play against Cockers that day yeah yeah that was right <laughs> actually yeah yeah, so it was an interesting game actually because it was it was my first ever sort of game for Scotland and it came. I think Kenny Logan was in the squad and he kind of. I, I think I was only there to 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 train initially uh, with the squad and perhaps be twenty third man or something. But then he pulled out, and I thought, oh god, I could be playing against Lomu here, um, but look. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily enough, they moved um, they moved me into outside centre, and someone else played. Uh, <laughs> someone else played in the wing, so it was uh, yeah, yeah. A little to keep a bit. I've watched the highlights of that. I think um, <laughs> yeah, he ran over a few people that day. Anyway, yeah, I think he batted me off like a, a fly <laughs> at one stage. So yeah, he was pretty formidable, and I think. Uh, and, and until you sort of took the field with them and things like that, you just, you know, obviously his footage is there to be seen for everyone, but he was just so quick and strong and he was he was different level. Next question, I'm sure um, probably making your Scotland debut is up there, but proudest moment of your career? Um, yeah, Scotland, first caps, obviously a really proud mo- moment. It was out on a tour, uh, last game on tour in America, so... It, it was really good, obviously, because it's a lifelong goal. But I think probably the prof- proudest moment was 2006 when we won the Kilcutta Cup because we we kind of um, it was my first sort of Six Nations and we that that was with a team and in that team there were guys like you know Gordon Ross, Chris Patterson. You know Craig Smith. You know all, all these guys that had come through the age group with uh, Chunk, I think. Um, so it was it was great to win it, but also to, to to beat England and then to to do it with a lot of guys that you come through since a young age. So that was probably the proudest proudest moment. I would think. We'll just finish. Last question. Um, we're obviously in lockdown just now. But um, if you could meet one guy that you played with in your career for a pint, uh, who would it be? Um, yeah, probably probably Gordon Ross. Just he's he's. I used to I used to play football against him when I think we were ten, and then played rugby against him. He was at Heriot's, I was at Watson's, and we played you know Edinburgh stuff. Um, all the way through and then Scotland as well. So no, he's down in um, 
down south now in Worcester. So yeah, we always have a good laugh when we meet up. So yeah, probably probably goggles. Well, listen, Marcus, we'll get you back uh, to, to our clubhouse for a pint soon anyway, uh, once we get through this. But really appreciate you joining us um, for this. And uh, yeah, hopefully we see you back at BT Murrayfield soon. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully see you soon. Top man. Cheers. Okay, cheers.